I think I poured a little too much. <clears throat> well, I got four chapters to go, and they're not very long. So, we're up to chapter 30 of Second Nephi, and I'm kind of anxious to get done with this uh, <laughs> sequel to First Nephi. So, I just might try two, two for, per video. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, I would speak unto you for I, Nephi, in case I don't know who he is, <laughs> would not suffer that ye should suppose that ye are more righteous than the Gentiles shall be. For behold, except ye shall keep the commandments of God, ye shall all, all likewise perish. <clears throat> and because of the words which have been spoken, ye need not suppose that the Gentiles are utterly destroyed. For behold, I say unto you that as many of the Gentiles as will repent uh, are the covenant people of the Lord, and as many of the Jews as will not repent shall be cast off. So, more repetition. Uh, if you took the repetition out and all the ripped off uh, Bible quotes and chapters, this thing would be a pamphlet. Probably not enough to wipe your backside. But... <laughs> uh... Alright. For behold, I say unto you that... Wait, oh, sorry. For the Lord covenanteth with none, save it be with them that repent and believe in his Son, who is the Holy One of Israel, who hasn't even been born yet. He's got centuries to go. I mean, it'd be like George Washington prophesying me. I mean, why? <laughs> Behold, and in that day there will come a black sheep infidel named Fubar, who shall pwn this book and get buzzed at the same time. Yeah, and now I would prophesy somewhat more concerning the Jews and the Gentiles. For after the book, this book, of which I have spoken, shall come forth and be written unto the Gentiles, and sealed up again unto the Lord, there shall be many uh, wait. There shall be many which shall believe the words which are written, and they shall carry them forth unto the remnant of our seed. And then shall the remnant of our seed know concerning us, by reading this book, how that we came out from Jerusalem, as detailed in this book, and that we are descendants of the Jews, as detailed in this book, and the gospel of Jesus Christ shall be declared among them centuries before anyone else gets it. Wherefore, they shall be restored unto the knowledge of their forefathers, and also to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, which was, which was, which was had among uh, their fathers. Okay. And then shall they rejoice, for they shall know that it is a blessing unto them from the hand of God. And their scales of darkness shall begin to fall from their eyes. 
and many generations shall not pass away among them, save they shall be a white and delightsome people. So if you're really good, you get to be honkies. That's verse 30, chapter of uh, chapter 30, verse 6 of Second Nephi. More uh, white and delightsome. And And it shall come to pass that the Jews, which are scattered, also shall begin to believe in Christ, and they shall begin to gather in upon the face of the land, and as many as shall believe in Christ shall also become a delightsome people. So, you guys keep believing, even you uh, black Mormons, because I've met a few. Of course, you know, anything's possible, right? Sounds like being a Jewish Nazi to me, but, you know, people need to belong to stuff. stuff. You get to become white and delightsome. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Got a bunch of bullshit. Racist bullshit. And it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall commence his work among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people to bring about the restoration of his people upon the earth. And with righteousness shall the Lord God judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. We're going to rip off more Isaiah. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. <sighs> Oops. All right. Oh, yes. Uh, for the time speedily cometh that the Lord God shall cause a great division among the people. That's what God does. He divides. Jesus explained it to us. He came to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. Kick some ass. <sighs> a great division among the people and the wicked will be he will destroy this uncapitalized he. And he will spare his people, yea, even if it so be that he must destroy the wicked by fire. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and Faithfulness, the girdle of his reins. God, this is all familiar. I mean, he's etching this shit on gold. But he's repeating the shit out of it. I mean, God, he could have saved a ton of gold. And then, shall the wolf dwell with the lamb? All right, more Isaiah. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a, a little child shall lead them. Wasn't that W? <laughs> and the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. 
and the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. Deja vu, folks. <laughs> Again. And the wean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. So now we're in uh, mythical dancing with unicorns land. And they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God, this is all regurgitated, recycled Isaiah. Wherefore the things of all nations shall be made known. Yea, all things shall be made known unto the children of men. There is nothing which is secret, save, save it shall be revealed. There is no work of darkness, save it shall, shall be made manifest in the light. And there is nothing which is sealed upon the earth, save it shall be loosed. Wherefore, all things which have been revealed unto the children of men shall at that day be revealed, and Satan shall have power over the hearts of the children no more for a long time. And now, my beloved brethren, I must make an end of my sayings. He didn't give Isaiah any credit for that. All right, you know what? Read chapter uh, 31 real quick. And now I, Nephi, make an end of my prophesying unto you, my beloved brethren. No mention of uh, his boy Isaiah. Uh, and I cannot write but a few things which I know must surely come to pass. I don't think there's any drinks in the next two chapters. So I may just do this video and then I'll kill the other two in the next. And move on past Second Nephi. And it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall commence his work among all nations, kindreds. Oh wait, wrong one, sorry. I mean Chapter 31 now. I know must surely come to pass, neither can I write but a few of the words of my brother Jacob. So now he's going to... Come on, Jacob gets his book. It, it follows. Uh, no, he's going to squeeze in some Jacob. Wherefore, the things which I have written sufficeth me, save it be a few words which I must speak concerning the doctrine of Christ. Wherefore, I shall speak unto you plainly, according to the plainness of my prophesying, for my soul delighteth in plainness. No, you're not having a flashback. You said all of this before. For after this manner doth the Lord God work among the children of men, for the Lord God giveth light unto the understanding, for he speaketh unto men according to their language, unto their understanding. Wherefore I would not that ye should remember that I have spoken to, unto you concerning that prophet, which the Lord showed unto me that should baptize the Lamb of God which should take away the sins of the world. And now, if the Lamb of God, He being holy, should have need to be baptized by water to fulfill all righteousness, oh then, how much more need have we, being unholy, to be baptized, yea, even by water? And now, I would speak of you, my beloved brethren, wherein 
the Lamb of God did fulfill all righteousness in being baptized by water, except it hasn't happened yet. He's just such a damn good prophet, he forgets that it isn't past tense. Nephi, I mean. Not just a smith, I mean. Solomon Spaulding or whoever. Know ye not that he was holy? But notwithstanding, he being holy, he showeth unto the children of men that according to the flesh he humbleth himself before the Father and witnesseth unto the Father that he would be obedient unto him in keeping his commandments. Wherefore, after he was baptized with water, the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the form of a dove. And again, it showeth unto the children of men the straightness of the path and the narrowness of the gate by which they should enter, he having set the example before them. And he said unto the children of men, Follow thou me. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, can we follow Jesus, save we shall be willing to keep the commandments of the Father? And the Father said, Repent ye, repent ye! and be baptized in the name of my beloved Son, who hasn't been born yet. And also, the voice of the Son came unto me, saying, He that is baptized in my name, to him will the Father give the Holy Ghost. Like unto me, wherefore follow me, and do the things which ye have seen me do. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, I know that if ye shall follow the Son, S-O-N, capitalized, with full purpose of heart, acting no hypocrisy and no deception before God, but with real intent, repenting of your sins, witnessing unto the Father, capitalized, that ye are willing to take upon you the name of Christ, capitalized, by baptism, yea, by following your Lord, capitalized, and your Savior, capitalized, I'll stop, I'm just having down unto the water, according to his word, behold, then ye shall receive the Holy Ghost, yea. <laughs> he cometh then cometh the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost. Capitalized both. And then, can ye speak with a tongue of angels? That's why I was asking, do Mormons speak in tongues? And I've been informed by, in the comment section, they don't. I mean, I didn't think they did. But it says here, hmm. And, uh, a long ass verse, verse 13. That you'll speak in tongues, and it's not the first time they said this. Yeah. The tongue of angels, and shout praises unto the Holy One of Israel. But behold, my beloved brethren, thus came the voice of the Son unto me, saying, after ye have repented of your sins and witnessed unto the Father that ye are willing to keep my commandments by baptism of water and have received the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost and can speak with a new tongue. Verse 14. Uh, of angels. And after this should deny me, and after this should deny me, it would have been better for ye that ye had not known me. I don't know you. Introduce yourself. And I heard a voice from the Father saying, Yea, the words of my beloved are true and faithful. 
He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. So stick in there. Stick it. Stick with it. Just remember there's a difference between kneeling down and bending over. Just saying. I think Frank Zappa said that. And now, my beloved brethren, I know by this that unless a man shall endure to the end, in the following the example of the Son of the living God, he cannot be saved. Sorry. Wherefore, do the things which I have told you. I have seen that the Lord and your Redeemer should do. For, 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 this cause have they been shown unto me that ye might know the gate by which ye should enter. <laughs> For the gate by which ye sh should enter is repentance and baptism by water. And then cometh the remission of your sins by fire and by the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, excuse me. So many Christians prefer the Holy Spirit. It doesn't sound so stupid. It sounds spiritual. Holy Ghost, that sounds so... <laughs> and then are ye in this straight and narrow path which leads to eternal life. Yay! Ye have entered in by the gate. Ye have done according to the commandments of the Father and the Son. And ye have received the Holy Ghost, which witnesses of the Father and the Son unto the fulfilling of the promise which he hath made, that if ye entered in by the gate, ye should receive. And now, my beloved brethren, after ye have gotten into that straight and narrow path, I would ask if all is done. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for ye have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ, which unshaken faith in him relieth wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save. Wherefore, ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. Wherefore, if ye shall press forward feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end. Behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, this is the way, and there is none other way, nor name given under heaven, whereby men can be saved in the kingdom of God. And now, behold, this is the doctrine of Christ, and the only and true doctrine of the Father, the only and true doctrine of the Father. Even you Muslims, you hear what they're saying about you? And of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, which is one God, three in one oil, just like just a grease my bicycle chain with. <laughs> Without end. Amen. See you guys in chapter 32 and 33, and we'll be done with 2 Nephi. Fucking A. So as soon as I get this video together, I'll start the next one.